Thanks to educational website Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Lots of people started following this YouTube channel because of the vlogs I made during my PhD in atmospheric physics at the University of Exeter. I loved doing my research and I loved making these videos, but unfortunately I had to graduate at some point, and that necessarily meant the end of the videos showing what doing a PhD was like. However, there are lots of people out there doing interesting PhD projects, and in this new video series I'm going to spend a few days with a new researcher each episode, showing you what their life is like, learning a bit about them, and learning about the topic of their thesis. In this first episode I'm spending a couple of days with Kit Ashton, a friend of mine who's studying at Goldsmiths, University of London, and writing his thesis on a critically endangered language. So I grew up in Jersey, which is a Channel Island, a British island, really close to France. In fact, you can see France from near where I grew up. Uh, and we have our own language there in, uh, in Jersey. It's called Gerier. It's a dialect of Norman. Uh, it's a Latin-based language, uh, but it's endangered. So there's only a few hundred folks left that can speak it. Le Gerier est une langue parlée par les chics de Paula Natif en l'île de Gerier. So as a musician, I'm interested in how music can help keep this language alive, and that's the basis of my PhD research, which falls under the discipline of ethnomusicology. What is your musical background? You say you're a musician. Sure. What do you mean by that? So I'm a singer and guitarist, first and foremost, and producer. I uh, play a bit of bass and whatever else. Um, and so over the years after my undergrad, I did 10 or so years as a guess as a working musician, so kind of session work, production, bits of teaching, bits of my own stuff as a singer-songwriter, um, and some weird random original bands as well along the way. So a whole mix of things. Um, yeah, that, and then kind of got drawn back into academia just by kind of asking these questions around music and culture that led me actually to think about Jersey and, and what what social role music might have in Jersey. A few days, and a haircut, after meeting at Goldsmiths, we took a quick flight over to Jersey to spend a couple of days learning about the language and to get the band together. Kit's band, Vablebeck, form part of his PhD. So I hope with this trip you'll get a, a flavour of obviously Jersey, but also the community there that speak the language and that are engaging with the language, and also of the band and what we do. And you'll get a, a bit of a snapshot into the, the sort of world of my field work. So we got picked up from the airport and uh, we picked up a car and then we got dropped off here at our accommodation because Kit and I are staying here for a couple of days to film and so Kit sorted us out some accommodation and apparently uh, it was Art House Jersey um, who said, yeah, we can provide you with accommodation. We're gonna, you're going to be staying with the Jersey Academy of Music. And I thought, it's going to be, it's a PhD, like, you know, musicians never have that much money so, you know, it'll be all right, it'll be fine. <laughs> That's, that's where we're staying. <laughs> what kind of PhD stays somewhere with chandeliers? It's, it's almost like the end of 2001, but it doesn't have the glowing floor. Oh yeah. It's not every filming trip that you get to uh, drive around a gorgeous island in the convertible, but while it lasts, I'm gonna take this. Is this your normal ride kit? <laughs> no, this is borrowed from my dad, so it's uh, a scratch on this beauty is more than my life is worth. So it's a new day, we're in our fancy convertible, uh, courtesy of Kit's dad, and uh, we're gonna be taking you around Jersey a little bit um, and talking about the language, about Kit's project. Even maybe this bench. Yeah? Could kind of cut up. Well, that's all right. Right, so Kit, where, where are we? What is, what's that gorgeous view? We are looking at the beautiful little harbour of Gori. Uh, and behind we have uh, the castle uh, Montorgai, also known as La Vieille Charte in Gerier, the old castle, uh, in the gorgeous island of Jersey. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning here. I mean, it, we, we, you can't see behind the camera, there's a huge beach and the lovely castle over there and there's an ice cream van just down there. Um, this is how I want to film all my videos. Just, yeah, you can hardly call this work really, but here we are. <laughs> so why this project? Like, What is it about this specific, the language and using music that's drawn you to doing this? Mm. I'm from Jersey and my gran spoke Gerier. In fact, she only spoke Gerier in French until she went to school and she was told, you have to speak English now. And by the way, that Gerier stuff is the peasant's language. It's pointless, you should forget it. Um, so my, she didn't pass it on to my dad. My mum's side doesn't have the language, so I was kind of aware of it, but didn't really grow up with it. 
then as an adult I um, became a musician I went and did my first music degree in Liverpool at Lippa and spent 10 years just as a working musician mainly in the UK but over a little bit in the States and Europe but as I came back here the government of Jersey the department that's looking after Jerry you know, trying to revitalize it were looking as it happened at that time for a musician to help them to use music to, to take six songs into schools so it's a little paid gig it was interesting and it connected to this to my sort of growing interest in um, well languages in general but just culture and music and that kind of thing so I took on the project and, and really that was when I guess I was kind of a convert to the idea of saving Jerio it, it's it's value to our culture here it's value actually as part of world heritage you know as, as a language that has uh, hundreds of years of literature stories poems and songs uh, recipes, dances, all kinds of things that are a really rich um, aspect of Jersey's culture. And yeah, that really took me on a journey that I couldn't have predicted. It led to me doing a master's in, uh, well, master's in music, but really focusing on ethnomusicology, so thinking about the way that music and people make music, music and the way that music and culture link, um, which has now led to this PhD and uh, exploring other musical projects uh, across, yeah, different generations and yeah, all kinds of different styles and different uh, ways of doing music and linking music to language. So absolutely fascinating journey that I'm uh, really I'm privileged to have taken on and I'm loving every bit of the way. Hey, what's not to love, right? Technically, you're working on your thesis right now. Well, technically, I'm on my YouTube placement. It still counts as work. Oh, yeah. This isn't work! <laughs> <laughs> so we walk down the coast a bit, you can still see Montagoy over there, that thing. And then over here is a, a Napoleonic era kind of fortification as well. But then there's this thing, and we're actually right next to another one here, these concrete things. What are these, Kit? So this is basically the arse end of a German Nazi bunker, because Jersey, the Channel Islands, were the only part of the British Isles to be occupied during the Second World War. The Ville de Monge fut occupée durant la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. From the 30th of June 1940 to the 9th of May 1945, so nearly a year after D-Day, the islands were occupied, fortified, and their inhabitants existed in a unique light-handed occupation. Civilian life on the islands during the occupation is a fascinating topic that we really don't have time to get into here, but in this specific instance, it had a serious negative effect on the local language, which, already dwindling, was suppressed further. It's one of the major reasons the language is so endangered today. So you can sort of see in, actually. How much? Oh, it's just a little pillboxy bit. Of course, my family was here, my grand and granddad were here, my um, dad was a wee lad, he was three when the war started, eight when it finished. Uh, and of course, the occupation years had a real impact, not just on Jersey, but on the use of Jerie, but also, we did get through and survive and Liberation Day is a crucial time in our annual calendar. So actually, we're just coming up to Liberation Square right now, which is going to be on our left. This was the site of really the major celebrations on the day that the freedom of Jersey was declared from the Nazis. Uh, that hotel, the Pomme d'Or, was the, uh, the Nazi headquarters of the, the Navy. And um, this whole area was absolutely full of people uh, when the British Army came up from the harbour and the Nazi flag was taken down and the British and Jersey flags were put up. And my dad used to live in a flat right up there, just on the left. And there is a very famous photo taken from roughly this sort of angle, but looking back that way, where you can just see a few kids hanging over the balcony up there. And one of those kids is my dad. My projects are, I've got four projects, and they're all related to how, uh, how we can raise the status of Jerry in, in Jersey society. So um, I've got a band that sing in Jerry. We're the only regular band in the world right now that sing in this endangered language. We're called Badlebeck. Uh, so we've released a couple of albums, we, we do gigs. Um, then I took uh, a, one particular song that the band does, but it's a real traditional song. It's got a real cultural relevance in Jersey. Uh, I took that into schools and taught it to 280 school kids. And then from that, um, 
that, that pool of children, I, I uh, formed a choir, 30, um, well it was like 25 kids from those schools and five older kids got together, formed this kind of youth choir and we performed that particular song on Liberation Day, which is again a really important cultural day celebrating when Jersey was um, liberated from Nazi occupation at the end of the Second World War. And then the fourth project was a collaborative songwriting project. So I, um, I got a load of local bands to write a song. So either kind of take a song they'd written or write something original, working with a Jarier speaker. Uh, and the, uh, the rule was it had to have at least one Jarier word in the song. And then once they'd done that, we got everyone together at a, a gig as part of a festival in Jersey in a professional venue and performed these songs on one night. That was called the Jersey Song Project. So across these four, uh, projects have basically run them all and evaluated uh, kind of using different techniques but essentially writing what's called an ethnography so getting a picture of the people group um, so to try and work out how effective this has been the kinds of impacts and the kinds of ways that this process has raised the status of Javier in Jersey. So this is the island's capital, this is St Helier behind me, which is a lovely town. Uh, we're coming from the coast to do a bit more filming here, uh, but we've also come in to get lunch and um, to sort of supplement it we're, well, kits busking. <laughs> So what are your winnings? Uh, let's have a look see. It's pretty good. That's not bad haul that. That's a pound there. Isn't it? Oh, that's, around, yeah. that's, that's enough for lunch, right? Yeah, I'd say so. A cheap <laughs> cheap uh, greasy spoon maybe. Or maybe. So, we're after some oysters, but we're wondering if you wouldn't mind opening them for us. Two for me, one for him. Cheers, man. Let's get that mischievous grin off of your face. <laughs> I've not had oysters before, so this is a new experience that I'm not certain is going to be great for me. <laughs> oh boy. And that's it, that's all the garnish you need? Pretty much, you can have Tabasco or whatever, but that's... You know, that's, the, that's the right way to do it, okay. Kind of like a shot. A seafood shot. It's basically a seafood shot of zinc. Oh, kids. goodness. Kids have been so excited for this. I'm not quite so much. So just down the hatch, no Pretty much down, down and enjoy. All right, so santé. Santé. Not as bad as I thought it would. <laughs> That's all right, actually. That's not. It's, it, it, so it's lemon juice, and then it's just a slight hint of sea. Yeah. And then uh, almost like a kind of a grit. A little, yeah. a little bit like a sandy kind of texture. Might have got a little small pearl. Oh yeah, That's where course. pearls come from. Of course. Well, there we go. So I have to, you can have your second one. I will, yeah. I will stop at one. I add a bit of Tabasco on this one. Sont it. Good stuff. Le Gérier est une langue mnichie. So how many people speak Gérier? So it's hard to say exactly because when that generational link was broken, which is the key thing that made it critically endangered, um, was a good while back, so perhaps around sort of early 1900s really. So we've, there was a middle generation there that means now the, the last native speakers are all post-retirement age pretty much. Right. So there, and a lot of them don't leave the house, so we can't say for sure. So, but we think there's maybe two to three hundred, maybe a few more up to five hundred that are native speakers, fluent speakers that use it regularly. There's also maybe a couple of thousand, maybe those, the children of that generation that understand Jeria but don't necessarily speak it. And others that, like myself, that have come to, back to it as it were, that it has the family link or that even just come to it afresh who are learning it and you know, connecting to it in a new way. Yeah. One of the ways that people are coming to the language is a regular session run in the Adelphi, a pub in St Helier, every week. Kit wanted me to drop into the session to try learning a bit of the language and to meet Geraint Jennings, who works for Jersey Heritage promoting Gerrier and has been a key collaborator with Kit. My name is Geraint Jennings. I animate uh, weekly meetups uh, in the pub and cafe where people can come and speak Gerrier, eavesdrop on Gerrier, ask questions, play games, 
do some activities, learn some phrases and generally get in contact with the Jere speaking community. Mon nom est Geraint, checkez ton nom. Mon nom est Simon. Bonsoir Simon. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Bonsoir Bonsoir. Comment que t'es? So the session's being run really informally. Uh, it's a mix of just sort of casual conversation, um, you know, people being introduced to new words, occasionally dropping into English, but mostly in the target language. So it's completely impenetrable to someone like me. Like I get, I'm okay at French, but this is so different that I can get things like in uh, and things like that. But the grammar is just so different, so I I can't really engage. Kit, of course, on the other hand, can you know hold his own in the conversation. And some of these people are they're not fluent because any people who are fluent are past retirement age and you know grew up with the language. But some of these guys are getting on for it. Phrase number two. Oh boy. Chacha. Ah, sangu. Comme le chien. Chi pisse. Dans sa soupe. Pour la salle. Et l'autre. Chi chi. Dans. Pour le passé. I have no idea. Chacha a son goût. Comme le chien chi. Piston sa soupe pour la salade et l'autre qui dort pour les pisser. <laughs> so each to his own taste, like the one who pisses in his soup to salt it and the other who craps in it to thicken it. <laughs> it purports to be liberal and tolerant, but then it's really judgmental. <laughs> That's what I like about it. It's a lovely little community of people, you know, clearly passionate about it, and most of them are people who are not from the island who are keen to learn the local heritage. It's just, it feels precarious, right, you know, there's a group of people over there on that table and in this one pub in the centre of the capital of the island. When we went up to the bar, I asked for a half pint in Jerry, so I probably didn't get it right, but I asked for one and the bar people had no idea, like no clue about Jerry at all. So it, it does feel like a language that's right on the edge. This is like the, the comeback, the promotion of it from near extinction. Vive la vive la vive l'ambo Vive la vive la vive l'ambo Vive la compagnie so we've come to the western end of Jersey, that's La Corbière, the lighthouse there, and we've got St. Wands Bay here to get some dinner, um, also because it's gorgeous. But over here, in that distant haze is an exotic island known as Guernsey, where I'll be taking the first of my PhD projects, my band, Badlebeck, to a lovely little festival called Vale Earth Fair. We'll be performing in a Norman castle. And I'm coming too. It's, it's an excuse for a holiday, basically. <laughs> You know, we're not going to see a typical week for you. You're not spending your entire PhD in Jersey mm. doing this. It's part of the field work. But mm. so, so what does what does a normal week look like for you in your PhD? So I'm currently in the writing up phase. So I've done, although my field work is ongoing in the sense of I'm still embedded in that community and you know, relevant things coming up could end up in my thesis. I've got enough data to write up my PhD. So I'm now most of the way through writing. Um, so m my typical week is me in front of a computer just, just bushing, you know, get, tearing my hair out and pushing out another <laughs> few thousand words and well. deleting yeah. a few thousand <laughs> words. Um, so, but then sometimes coming into the library, I might come in for supervision as well, of course. Um, but you I'm mostly just, work at home. But I do at the moment mostly work at home. So Guernsey is just like Jersey. Um, if you haven't been here, it's like rural France. If you haven't been to rural France, it's it's kind of like paradise really. So we're staying um, overnight here for the festival in uh, what is the Guernsey Scout Hut which is just behind me here. It's this gorgeous old farmhouse that was built, I don't know if you can see this about the door, in 1723. It's this like thick walled lovely old farmhouse that's been converted and the band's actually rehearsing outside now. <laughs> Yes, 
to eat. So we've just arrived in the main bit of the festival. There's the stage over there. So if you've not been to a kind of folky, environment-themed festival like this one in the UK, they're all basically the same. They've all got a bunch of bunting everywhere. Uh, a whole load of people here who are just kind of chilling, not causing any trouble, enjoying themselves. Um, a lot of them have beards. There's a large angle on um, climate change and extinction rebellion and a bit of an echo chamber, maybe. And a really interesting variety of, of music and art and food and drink. And, you know, it's a lovely chill atmosphere here. Lots of kids, nice family kind of vibe. Not a bad view for a festival from the top of this castle. Well, there are desert like an alien from War of the Worlds has just landed over there in St. Peterport. Kit's just about to go on. How are you feeling about this? You've done this loads of times before. Yeah, you know. No, it's super exciting, to be honest. Like, yeah, we, we have done a load of gigs, but this is our first big proper gig in Guernsey. Yeah. It's a beautiful festival. It's really meaningful as well, because Errol, one of the founders, just recently died. You know, we're so proud to bring our culture, our language here, and have a laugh, make some music, and hopefully get people dancing. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. From Jersey, the best of it! Bonjour, bonjour! Yanta, yanta, trecot! So Kit's just done his set and there's another band on now. I asked if I could put my tripod somewhere and they were like, yeah, put it with our kit. And Kit, we're in this castle, right? But Guernsey was also occupied during the war. And so there's an addition made to the castle under here. Look at this undercroft. This is a technique special, you need to make sure that... Yeah, make sure it's all secure. Yeah, yeah. How's that? She's the right size of the doors in here as well. Yeah, yeah. She's the right size of the doors in here as well. Yeah, yeah. Find ourselves a home. I'm gonna
in space well. How did it go? It went so well. I mean, sure, there could have been a bigger crowd, but hey, the, the folks that were there had, a, I think, a good performance out of us, and they were lovely, gave us a really lovely energy back. That's what it's all about. Music creates that connection between people, and you know, if the language is part of that, then that's all uh, what helps to keep it all alive. And so, yeah, that's my thesis in a nutshell, right? So therefore, thinking about what's next and where it goes, I can take that and hopefully, sure, write it up in my thesis, but hopefully it's actually something alive and living that can keep going, maybe inspire other folks with other languages that might be working with music as well. And uh, yeah, it's something that is beyond just a sort of dry bit of research. So that's what's brilliant about this. Naturally, this video couldn't go into a lot of detail on everything in Kit's PhD, but if you found his research interesting, then you can check out his YouTube channel, Kit Ashton Musicology, which is all about music, how it works, and what it's for. And if you are interested in doing a PhD yourself, then a great place to start is this video sponsor, Brilliant.org. Doing a PhD is all about independent study, pursuing your academic interests and pushing your own knowledge forwards. And Brilliant is an educational website that is all about all of those things. It allows you to improve or practice your knowledge of topics in science, maths and logic. And it does this by getting you to apply your knowledge solving practice problems. Personally, I think the best way of learning is learning by doing, and that is what Brilliant is all about. In particular, if you have five minutes spare in your daily commute, then use it to learn some new science or maths through Brilliant's daily challenges. Every day, Brilliant posts an intriguing problem which will require you to flex your brain muscles to solve. Think of it like a small daily workout. Just for your brain. If you go to brilliant.org slash Simon Clark, then you can sign up for free and not only support this series, but if you're one of the first 200 people to do so, you can get 20% off your premium annual subscription. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And of course, thank you to Kit for agreeing to be featured. I'd also like to thank Chase and Art House Jersey for providing us with funding and accommodation. If you'd like to learn more about Gerriers, then there's a link in the description to L'Office de Gerrier where you can learn more about the language. Lastly, if you are a PhD student watching this and you think your project would make for an interesting video in this series, then there's also information in the description about how to get in touch with me because I would love this series to feature as many different PhDs covering different projects hosted at different universities as possible. So if you think that's you, then get in touch. Thanks very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.